<laughs> that, that last video was too funny. Um, of course, there'll be some humorless person out there that goes, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Um, why don't I talk about something really simple that really kind of mystifies a lot of people, and that's understandable. They don't even teach it in photography school, and they don't even teach you about it in any uh, uh, book on uh, photography or any magazine that you read. And uh, I can't stand one of the biggest, the sick, demented things that humans are guilty of is uh, confusing descriptions with explanations. You know, there are lots of descriptions of magnetism, for example, but you know, there are no explanations of magnetism. Well, there is now, but, uh, you know, the same is true of lenses. I mean, everything in the universe is fields, and fields are not particles. And uh, the nature of uh, lens design and geometry and construction, while it has a lot of uh, empirical quantity, as so far as their construction is concerned, um, including indexes of refraction, you know, whether you've got spherical, aspherical elements, uh, refractive indexes of uh, ED glass. ED glass is just doped glass, which actually change, changes the far end and near end of the visible light spectrum so that there is uh, proper convergence to allow for more simplex lens construction and also allowing for a greater range of uh, of, uh, of uh, lens uh, constructions like 28 to 300 millimeters and uh, construction of some really, really oddball and sometimes asinine ultra zooms. It's like, well, I've got a Sigma, you know, 28 to 800. And of course, that's not a real lens, but I mean, there are lenses out there like the 100 to 600 millimeter, and you know, there, there, there's a handful, of, they're all crap. Well, not the 28 to 300, the 18 to 200. Now, I've actually stated that those are really good lenses, and there are exceptions, but I never said that I was ever going to confuse those lenses with, uh, you know, beautiful prime lens like this. I mean, that's certainly not the case, and that's never going to be the case. Um, there's just a couple really simplex things you need to understand that you can actually, yourself, if you want to try out a lens, Especially if you try out one and, you know, you've got a return period, obviously, then, you know, and test it, and if it sucks, then return it. But a lot of people actually will buy a nice uh, zoom lens, and it'll be a crappy zoom lens, and they think it's awesome, but they have no basis of comparison. The ultimate truth is that there has been so many of you people that bought, like, a prime lens, that have been shooting for a long time. It's not like you just started photography. You've been shooting a long time, and you've got four or five lenses, and most of them are really crappy zooms, maybe one 50mm prime, and... You'll buy like a lens like this that I recommend, or like the Tikina, or the 135mm Nikkor, and uh, some of you are, you know, are really cynical. It's like, oh, you know, I've been shooting for 20 years, and, you know, my uh, whatever to whatever zoom lens is awesome, and makes great pictures, and then you get one of these, and you can't describe it, and that's always the case. That's how it happens if you ever read, what's the difference between a prime lens and a zoom lens? They'll say, well, a prime lens is a fixed uh, focal length uh, lens, and it produces better images at the same focal length, usually uh, as against another zoom, which uh, also incorporates that. But that's a description, it's not an explanation, it doesn't tell you anything. I've read many countless videos about why, the specifics, including parallax and uh, binocular uh, disparity and uh, ED glass and how uh, there's actually a, a large number of variables, including the length of the lens, how much air it has to pass, pass through between elements. It's not the air itself that affects it, but it's the actual distance it has to travel for uh, reaching the next element, whether the element after that is an ED element or not, the number of ED elements, the type of glass it is. The coatings, believe it or not, if you have a perfect uh, lens hood on your lens, the coating obviously does help a lot, and of course it helps enormously so in construction of really some really oddball lenses, but ultimately it's not reducible to coatings. People think that coatings make such a huge difference, and they do for light transmission. They do help in light transmission, which helps us to create uh, you know, some of these fantastical zooms, which really shouldn't exist, but if if at, the idiots at Nikon and Canon and Tikina and Tamron and Sigma think that they can come out with some sort of oddball, freaky focal range, like 100 to 600, and they think they can make a buck off of it, they'll freaking figure out a way to make it and sell it, even if its property sucks. But some of the really important stuff that you really need to know is very, very simple and very reducible. You don't know how to know about 
field mechanics or you know the nature of light and of course it is photography you're talking about writing with light you should be interested in the nature of light and of course light is not particles there's no such thing as a photon there are not particles passing through your lens striking your sensor and I'm going to do a video about this soon it's the same BS about the electron which uh, all field theorists of any worth Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz Oliver Heaviside, James Clerk Maxwell, they all called that a psychosis, a brain disease. It is nothing other than rehashed Greek atomism. There are not particles flowing through your lens to the back of your sensor, and there's no such thing as a photon. It's an absolutely absurd human construct and concept with no basis in reality whatsoever. It makes Mother Nature out to be a crack whore, you know, with a bag full of magic particles and Nature and field mechanics don't work that way, but ultimately getting to the point here, which he has sometimes I engage in logo mocky and verbosity, which I don't have to, is that all lenses are a trade-off in construction. You need to have beautifully rendered images with rich color, which you can add color and saturation and post, but you can't add depth. You can't add the realism in Photoshop, you can't add it in Capture One, you can't add it in Lightroom. Can't be done. So when it comes to a simplex prime like this, or a one like at 50 millimeter or whatnot, you can't add that in post. You can have perfect corner to corner, uh, sharpness, um, lack of vignetting, lack of uh, chromatic aberration, or nearly so, but you can never have both. You can't have perfect color saturation and depth like your realism, true rendering of the image. It's the thing that people have been shooting for 20 years, you're leaving these com um, comments, and you're like, holy crap, I bought this lens you recommended, I've never seen anything like it, I've been shooting for 20 years, i got seven lenses or whatever, and man, this thing just craps out the silk, sex, and sugar, you know, you're, you know, thanks for recommending this lens, I've never shot anything like it, how come nobody ever told me, you know, about lenses like this, because people are idiots generally, that's why nobody ever told you about it. And you won't read about it in any photography magazine. Like I said, you, you, you look up, why are prime lenses better than zoom lenses? And that's not always the case. Now the trend is going away from that because a lot of the new primes are being designed for the next generation of FX sensors and they're being designed with a lot of elements in it. Uh, like the, uh, the current uh, release, or about to be released, Zeiss Milvus, 85mm uh, f1.4, it's got 11 elements in it. <laughs> I know exactly what it'll be like. Well, you haven't had your hands on it. How do you know what it's going to be? I know what it's going to be like due to its construction. Sigma's got the same issue. Tequina does to a certain extent on some of theirs. Uh, not their 100mm, however, of course, obviously, so my highest recommended lens. Um, but, you know, the Sigma Art Series, you know, bad depth, bad color saturation. They just got a bazillion elements in them. It's like, well, it's got perfect corner to corner sharpness, and it has this fuzzy, ethereal look, and they're all cyan shifted, by the way, and poorly constructed. But forgetting about whether the lens is beautifully constructed, part of that construction, obviously, is the elemental count in it. And I'm talking about actual physical construction and its robustness, its aperture, its overall construction. Forgetting about that, which, of course, is important, strictly talking about the glass and the nature of the image rendered, you just need to understand there's a trade-off. You can never have both. Perfect corner-to-corner. -corner, you know, really awesome uh, lack of chromatic aberration. You cannot have that and perfect color saturation and depth in image rendering. You can't have both. All lenses are a trade-off. Everything's a teeter-tarter. You can have one or the other, but never both. Or you can have a perfect balance of the two. Um, but the perfect balance ends up being a good zoom. And uh, the good zoom ain't an awesome prime lens. It just ain't. And that's a trade-off. It's like, well, we got plenty of one, plenty of the other. Never too much, you know, never enough of either end. The best glass on earth is still glass, okay? So it doesn't matter one damn bit who made the lens. Um, the, the, uh, the principle of bad glass, you know, there's still some really cheap crap out there, but even the cheap crap itself, uh, I mean cheap, cheap crap, is still better uh, than the, some of the best lenses uh, from 40 years ago. Uh, some of the exceptions were uh, old Leica lenses you know, stuff that was rolling out of Germany and early Japanese lenses, but I'm talking 40 years ago, I'm not talking 25 or 30 years ago, but 40. Um, it's too bad that Zeiss and others, uh, you know, lens geometry designers have sacrificed depth rendition and color saturation in order to have perfect, meaning lack thereof, vignetting and chromatic aberration. Zeiss and Tamron and Sigma is horrifically uh, guilty of this, not to mention their bad quality construction.
meaning sigma, never learned that excessive glass elements, especially ED glass elements with horrific dielectric permittivity, destroy saturation and depth rendering of the image you mean to create. You know, so deeply cherished by uh, intelligent photographers that know what it means to be using a four, five, six, seven, or eight element lens. <whistles> and, uh, you know, a low element count lens, especially with no ED glass in it. Something that destroys uh, light more than anything else, uh, other than more glass, is ED glass. And I've already made videos on that, so please don't ask me about that one. I mean, I guess I can. I need to go into more in-depth uh, discussion on it, but, you know, all lens design is a trade-off, and like uh, these super expensive Zeiss Milvis that are coming out, it used to be now, you know, now you got a difference between prime and a zoom, but now they're actually becoming uh, closer and closer, and that's not a good thing, um, because these lenses are being designed for perfect corner-to-corner -corner sharpness, or nearly so, and a lack of chromatic chromatic aberration for the newest to be coming out uh, full frame sensors with DX pixel densities. So that's a good thing and a bad thing. People that don't know any better are going to think it's awesome. People that do know better, meaning me, will know the difference because having uh, prime lenses with the exact same quality attributes uh, as zoom lenses is not a good thing. It is to a certain extent if you're an idiot and you want perfect per corner corner sharpness or lack of chromatic aberration, but some of us know better. I can remove chromatic aberration in post production, okay? I cannot add depth uh, rendition, depth rendering in post, no matter what application you use. Thanks for watching.